Throughout the history of the United States, there have been many different presidents and generals, but most people don't know very much about these people. Today, I'm going to tell you about Ulysses S. Grant. It's important to learn about the historical figures of our country so we know how they shaped the United States into what it is today. History has always been my favorite subject, so I know a lot about these people. Ulysses S. Grant had a very long military career, he was elected president, and he had an eventful life after his presidency. First of all, Ulysses S. Grant had a very long military career. He graduated from West Point in 1843 as a brevet second lieutenant. Later, the Mexican-American War broke out where he served as a quartermaster, and he was credited for bravery under fire when he led a troop into combat. Despite all this, he was very opposed to the war because he thought the United States was using it as an excuse to take territory from Mexico. Later, he was transferred to Fort Humboldt, California in 1854. An article on the Biography.com website titled Ulysses S. Grant Biography states that Grant started to drink heavily and he didn't get along with his commanding officer. This led to him resigning and returning to civilian life. Later, the Civil War broke out and he returned to the military as a colonel of the 21st Illinois Reg Regiment. He was in charge of Southern Illinois and Southeast Missouri. While he was stationed here, he captured Fort Henry and Fort Donaldson. These were two of the earliest <clears throat> and most significant Union victories. Afterwards, he was promoted to Major General of Volunteers, a two-star general. Later, he was leading his troops through Tennessee and was attacked by a large group of Confederate soldiers. He ultimately won the battle, but there were extremely high casualties on his side. Afterwards, he was ordered to take the city of Vicksburg. He tried to assault it several times, but failed miserably. So, he put a siege on the city for two months, and Vicksburg surrendered on July 4th, 1863. He hunted down General Robert E. Lee from March 1864 to April 1865. He constantly attacked Lee's army, and Lee surrendered to Grant on April 9th, 1865. This ended the Civil War, and Grant was promoted to the first full star general of the United States. Secondly, Grant was elected President of the United States. In the election of 1868, he ran as a Republican Party candidate against Horatio Seymour for the Democrats. Grant won 52% of the popular vote and won the electoral vote with 214 votes to 80. He took office on March 4, 1869. He was the youngest president at the time at the age of 46. During his first term, he had to deal with the reconstruction of the South. He put federal troops in many different states in the South to keep law and order, and smooth things over by pardoning many different leaders of the Confederacy. He also pushed for the ratification of the 15th Amendment in 1870, which gave African Americans the right to vote. Other than Reconstruction, he established the Department of Justice, he established the Weather Bureau, which is now called the National Weather Service, and he created Yellowstone National Park. There was also a major scandal during his term known as the Gold Scandal, where two of his associates tried to influence the government to manipulate the gold market. Grant was not involved in the scandal, but it hurt his reputation. At the end of his term, he ran the election of 1872 as a Republican candidate. An article on the website history.com called Ulysses S. Grant describes how some Republicans did not like Grant, so they split away from the Republican Party and formed the Liberal Republican Party. They partnered with the Democrats and tried to run Horace Greeley for president. But ultimately, Grant won the popular vote with 52%, and he won the electoral vote 286 to 66. During his second term, he had to deal with the Depression in, in 1873. He also had to deal with the Whiskey Ring, which was a major scandal. A number of his associates partnered with whiskey distillery owners, tried to steal millions of tax dollars from the government. His secretary was also directly involved in it, but Grant got the charges dropped. He tried to, he tried to set up a system that would fight the corruption, but he failed. He was going to run for a third term, but his reputation had been hurt so bad by the corruption that he decided not to. Lastly, Grant had an eventful life after his presidency. Grant and his family went on a trip around the world for two years, where he met with many different dignitaries in many different countries. Later, he invested all of his money in the firm Grant & Ward. An article called Grant's Life and Career on the website Grant's Tomb explains that Grant invested his money in the firm because his son was a partner. Unfortunately for Grant, his son's partner, Ferdinand Ward, bankrupted the firm and Grant with thousands of dollars in debt. To make up for this, he wrote personal memoirs that his friend Mark Twain published. He finished the memoirs just before he died and earned $450,000. Grant died on July 23, 1885 at the age of 63. He died from inoperable throat cancer that was brought on by his heavy smoking and was worsened by stress from the bankruptcy. All in all, Grant had an extremely long military career. He was elected president for two terms. 
and he had an eventful life after his presidency. Think about how Grant's influence shaped America and what it was today. And now you know a lot about at least one important figure from the United States history.